2 Community Team League. We're going to be jumping right on into game number two. Tonight we have We Want to Win Clan versus Crossfire Gaming. So far we've seen a very quick, very aggressive ZVZ taking We Want to Win up by one point. Going into game number two it is going to be uh, Crossfire Gaming's Thunder versus We Want to Win's Matzor. That's right. And so Matt Zor, as we said before, was Martin Zadarski. He is a 17-year-old Czech individual. He plays Terran, uh, but used to play Zerg. He's now a uh, high school student. He studies uh, IT. And many consider him the best Czech Terran player now, uh, apparently due to some people leaving SC2, however. First player who was promoted from the B team to the A team for this team, we want to win. And uh, he has played the most matches in Clan Wars in the past year for their team. He's their key player for both their 1 versus 1 and 2 versus 2 clans. So from Crossfire Gaming, we have Thunder. He's a Venezuelan Protoss player. He started when Wings of Liberty was released, and he's played in seasons 1 through 3 of Copa America and placed in top 16. He prefers to play aggressively. All right, and going right on in after those bios to the game. In the upper right-hand corner on our map, Overgrowth, Ellie wearing the green plating on his command center this evening. It is representing Terran Race and We Want to Win Clan Matzauer. And in the bottom left-hand corner representing Crossfire Gaming and Protoss, it is Thunder. Look forward to what we're going to see here in this uh, PVT. Uh, this map is quite the large distance between the two bases, so mm -hmm. as a Protoss, I definitely love the uh, the proxy Stargate Oracle type thing, especially against Terran. There's a couple of good spots back here because they're not. They do take a little bit of extra time for uh, the SCVs to scout, and uh, I mean it's become common enough that a lot of people do scout it. But uh, even then, if they do if they do see it and know it's coming, it's still not a terrible decision. But we'll see what we end up coming out here. That's right. And now, one of the things that's a, that's interesting about this map, though, is that there's not a whole lot of space behind this mineral line. So even if you get out that early oracle, uh, you've got to be real careful about where you get it positioned because uh, going against these these Terrans guys, they can put some marine. I mean, if they have enough enough marines to withstand the onslaught that is the oracle against light units. Uh, they can get pinned in there, and that can be kind of troublesome. Absolutely, and you know, especially with the um, with the early one 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 builds we've been seeing lately, not a lot of super early expansion out of the Terran. And to be quite honest, I think it's just because the Oracle is such a threat that if you put that command center down too early and don't get anything to be able to defend against that, you're pretty much just a sitting duck. Uh, and uh, you know, so it's kind of a response based play, but. Um, you know, looks like Matt Zauer is going to be getting his barracks up here quickly and has some gas mining already, so it looks like he's going to be having a quick factory. Um, but with that quick factory also comes the mines, and mines are, I believe, a one-shot kill for an oracle, so that's definitely something that you have to watch out for. Probe going to be coming in from Thunder into Matt Zauer's base, doing a circle behind the mineral line, poking away at a mineral patch. So he's going to see that he has one gas, and it looks like it's going to be a Reaper coming out. As we were talking about annoying things for the Terran from Protoss, the Reaper quite the annoying little bit itself for the Protoss from the Terran. Um, you know, in a lot of matchups, you see that uh, Mothership Core being forced out pretty early, even uh, before the Stalker sometimes. Um, and responding to those Reapers actually does cost a bit of gas, too, in almost every circumstance, either a Stalker or that Mothership Core. Uh, to be able to force that off, it looks like a probe sneaking around here on the back side a bit. Are we going to see a pylon? Or, yep, looks like we're going to see a pylon towards the middle here. This is a bit of an uncommon spot, so that's kind of interesting. And it, also, interestingly, uh, Matt Zor is putting down his uh, expansion there, so he must not be expecting a whole lot. He did scout with an SCV, so he saw what his opponent was doing, but at that point, it's kind of hard to tell specifically what your opponent's doing as uh, you don't have that cybernetics core completed yet. Uh, but. Looks like Warp Gate is going to be the thing to go for, and Stalker is out now, so Reaper's going to have to get out of there. Yeah, good timing by Thunder. Chrono boosting out that Stalker as he saw the gateway and the, or, I'm sorry, the barracks and the gas. He knew that Reaper's going to be coming. Proxy Stargate is coming down. Not super close, but definitely a lot closer than otherwise. And that Reaper, obviously being a scouting force, is he going to come across and find it? Looks like he's going to be just kind of hanging out at the tower, which is coincidentally just barely outside of the ring of the tower, but that reaper, 
is going to be oh. scouting its way around here. Is his It's pathing. going the back way though. Yep. And see, that's uh, the kind of the spot we were talking about before is, uh, you know, the, those spots that are more commonly scouted. And this probe here is in one of those spots as well. And that Reaper is going to potentially see it. Is he going to go up there? This now, actually if he kinda, does see it, that it actually, could actually go in Thunder's favor, though, because yeah. then Matt Zyre is going to think, okay, I got the probe. There wasn't even a pylon down yet. I mean, he might think that the timing's going to be off, so he might continue to look, but that is a pretty huh. good fake. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you there that, uh, that if he would have actually seen that, that would have been interesting. But uh, even more than that is a Void Ray coming out instead of an Oracle here. So an interesting choice from uh, from Thunder here. Instead of going for the Oracle, going directly for the Void Ray. Yeah, and he doesn't... Uh, I mean, he's got two gateways finishing up here, so it looks like he's going to be trying to get a ground force and then backing it up with a Void Ray. I mean, it is kind of scary, especially if uh, Terran comes out with some Marauders. Looks like he's producing Marines two at a time now, a Stim coming down as well. Uh, second Void Ray being produced now, and I agree with you in the fact that there is a pylon here really, like, almost... I think his warping range is just barely outside uh, the range of that natural expansion there, as the Reaper is now continuing to poke through the base of Thunder, still not seeing that Stargate. So this may catch him a bit off guard here, especially since you don't necessarily expect Void Rays so early. No, not at all, and I don't know, I mean, the units here that he's got is 10 Marines, which are going to be pretty decent. He's got a single Marauder there as well, and he's got a couple Bunkers going down. Uh, so it's possible that he'll be able to defend against this, but this is a very strong early push here. Yeah, if Thunder moves in here anytime real soon, he might catch us off guard, because as you said, there is only there are only two Marines in that bunker, so that those two Void Rays are going to be able to take down those structures very, very quickly, and Stalker is actually quite good against Marines in this sort of number. Uh, but he and is so going to move and do that. The bunkers are empty now, and the second one is being salvaged. Is it going to... Oh, it gets killed, so no free minerals back. Great time warp there, too. Uh, so these merchants are really forced to walk through molasses, getting caught in the middle while trying to retreat as well. And uh, Matsur is having a real bad day. SCV is moving forward to try and repair that orbital command, and now the uh, stalkers kind of have free reign here to do what they want. Yeah, pretty good micro coming down here from Thunder as well, microing back the units that have taken some damage. Both of those Void Rays still actively doing their damage. It looks like one is beginning to get a little low, the other one just has shields off, but Stalker's starting to take some more damage, but it looks game. like, uh, looks like, uh, that's, that's game. That's the GG. It's the no GG GG. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, that play is actually really, really cool. I like that, and we don't see it that frequently, but when we do, it is uh, generally pretty strong because... Uh, I mean, you can agree or disagree with me, but I feel like these days that uh, the Oracle is such a force that, especially when you don't scout it or when you scout and don't find it, it almost scares you more than if you did see it. Because um, you saw that Matsar had quite a decent number of Marines there, and he was kind of moving them around his base, uh, you know, just kind of covering the different angles. And then when you come in with a pretty big force of Stalkers and two Void Rays, it's pretty nasty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and he kind of, I think, would have preferred to, if he had known what was coming, would have wanted to have more of those Marauders out than Marines. But, uh, I mean, you've got to have both when you're dealing with Void Rays and Stalkers. It's really, uh, you kind of get to dictate what the right ratio is as the Protoss aggressor in that situation. So, uh, very neat. Um, what do you think that Terran could have done differently to defend against a push like that? Well, uh, definitely um, the setup at the front of his natural expansion was not necessarily ideal. I mean, he had two bunkers there, but one was behind the other, so only one bunker could really hit um, hit the Protoss uh, attack at once, and he only had half populated. So if he would have maybe built those side by side and uh, had his units in it, but, I mean, I understand what he was doing too. He had the Marines kind of available to scare away any other threats that may be coming, but... Uh, um, mostly I think scouting, you know, he did do quite a good effort of scouting around, but just didn't scout the right spots, which, I mean, you can't scout the entire map or you just spend your whole time scouting around. Uh, but Protoss definitely went into that game with a, uh, an, a plan in mind. You could tell that was a, a pretty practice, pretty refined build, and, uh, he did quite well with it. Mm -hmm. I did like the, uh, the utilization of a non-standard proxy position. That's always fun to see, uh, kind of playing with the metagame. A little bit to your advantage, and especially having that pro or that probe in the uh, normal "quote unquote" uh, location for the proxy, so it's like reverse mind games. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. But so with that, that is going to put uh, the score at one to one in uh, no one's favor. So after two, we're tied. 
and uh, going into game number three here in a moment.